This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got some very fun and important games coming up in week number 15 in the NFL. Some games that will go a long way towards deciding who goes to the playoffs, what the seeds may look like, and much more. We're going to break down those games for today with Dr. Ed Feng getting his read on the key games across week 15 and letting you know where his numbers show value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Thursday by Dr. Ed Feng. Find his work at thepowerrank.com. Check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank Ed. Week 15 is coming up. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Looking forward to some more NFL football. And, uh, you know, we're getting pretty close to those college football semifinal games. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. We got semifinals coming up, uh, which they look pretty fun. We've got pretty good playoff races in both the AFC and NFC. You know, a lot of middling teams involved, but still – it's more fun to talk about middling teams and their playoff implications, especially for the Saturday games this week as well. We'll talk about one of those games uh, with Lions and Broncos. So a lot left up in the air. I think it's going to be a fun. I know it's been a weird year with all the quarterbacking injuries and stuff like that, but yeah. I think it is at least reassuring, Ed, that like the stakes are high, even if the quality of play may not be as good as it has been in some recent years. Well, the stakes are always high, right? And it, yeah, it's of course unfortunate that some of these quarterbacks aren't playing anymore. But I think the stakes will be high in you know college football when we have a twelve-team playoff. I mean, it won't quite be the same as it was this year, but at least we'll have uh, a lot fewer opt-outs to uh, think about. And that playoff is going to be a blast. I'm already excited to break down uh, those with you next year. We're going to dive into NFL Week 15 here in just one second to get you ready for all the fun games. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts on that feed you can find right now. A breakdown of Thursday night football between the Raiders and the Chargers via Tom Vecchio breaking down his read on that game tomorrow of NFL player props, uh, some Anthony PL stuff, JJ Zacharyson back with us, and Austin Cass. It all break down uh, the Sunday night football game between the Ravens and the Jaguars. That'll be up on this feed on Saturday morning and also over on FanDuel TV Plus where you can find all of these shows. Go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account or uh, download the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and press in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WIT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call one 877 hope y or text open y in New York. We're going to dig into that uh, Broncos versus Lions game here in just one second. But first, Ed, I want to talk to you about a topic that does actually apply pretty heavily to that game because those two teams are very different from what they were earlier on this year. And you've talked before about how your college football model is very reactive to more recent games, uh, weighing data there more, more heavily than earlier on the year. 
And the NFL, we've seen a lot of teams have ups and downs this year. The Dolphins started off hot, have cooled off recently. The Broncos, opposite, where they got trounced 70 to 20 and then have been a lot better recently. So how do teams get handled in the model when they have those big gaps? Uh, they've had the big swings. Does it weigh things pretty heavily, pretty, pretty evenly across the entire year? How does your model hand, handle things like that on the NFL side of things? My model definitely looks at season long averages to rate NFL teams uh, in a league with strong regression to the mean. I do think that is the way to go. Uh, my model has been pretty successful uh, looking at spreads over the past, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. So I, I definitely do believe in it. I think Miami is, is pretty interesting because uh, you know, I, the defense should be getting better. They were in the bottom five, which is completely unexpected with, uh, you know, adding Vic Fangio as the DC, uh, he is considered one of the coordinators that actually do matter. And um, so, and you've seen them getting better. They have a healthy Jalen Ramsey. They are performing better. Maybe not the last two drives against Tennessee, but um, so, you know, that is definitely a team where I'm like, yeah, I might be off a little bit. Uh, I might be underrating them a little bit. I am off market with them on the jets, but I actually think that's, because the Jets are a lot better with Zach Wilson. It's kind of really? weird to say. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I, Miami is certainly a team that I think you need to be like, oh, well, I think the season long numbers are underrating them a little bit. I think they are the exception. Uh, we'll get into Denver in the next section because I think their situation is completely different uh, from, from Miami. But in general, the idea for me, I tend to lean on season long averages. I think that is different from what the market does, but I do think that is one of the reasons my number find value. I do the same thing as you, where I think it's it's better to take those those longer term views of things after accounting for injuries, because injuries like if it's an injury that explains why there have been ups and downs, that's one thing. But for like a lot of teams, that's not the case. Now, for the Dolphins, maybe you could make that pitch because their entire offensive line is now hurts. So like you could make that pitch uh, for them, but like. For some teams, it's variance. And in the NFL, I know strength of schedule is not as as big of a gap uh, in the NFL as it is in college football, but like there are still ebbs and flows to teams that you faced. And I think that right. does matter quite a bit. So I think that the right way to handle things personally is the same way that you do, where we take the full season into account. The NFL is a game of small samples. I don't want to make the, sm the sample smaller unless I get a more relevant sample. And that means primarily injuries um, or like sure. dramatic scheme changes. Like I have to handle the right. Cowboys different because they shifted this very pass heavy approach. I think it's worth it to shift them because that's a scheme change, a conscious scheme change. Sure. I'd rather yeah. change for that than change because a team happened to get hot in a couple right. of plus matchups. So I think that to me is a key thing. Did something tangible change? If yes, focus on the smaller sample. Rob Pizzolo talked about that on your podcast where he's okay with small samples if they're a more relevant sample. But I think for a lot of these situations, it's more so variance than a legitimate shift in the way things are occurring. Right, for sure. And Rob was, of course, mixing in watching with games and yeah. the watching of the games was a big factor in whether he said, hey, this is a relevant sample. Um, this is what I should be paying attention to. I can deal with smaller sample size or eh, they look kind of like crap. The numbers aren't necessarily confirming what I see. So let's not do that. I agree. Okay, so let's talk about a game where this is all very relevant. Begin things off on Saturday night between the Broncos and the Lions, where right now Lions are four and a half point favorites, and the total is 47 and a half. And Ed, Lions are struggling recently. Broncos playing a lot better, at least getting better results. Do you see the Lions bouncing back here to cover at home? Yeah, this moved, which is unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is a pretty good uh, buy low spot on Detroit. Look, the defense might suck. Uh, they've, they've been kind of slowly sliding in a lot of my numbers, and that is definitely a concern. I think they're just playing bad right now. I think they're probably you know, not a bottom five unit. Uh, if they can be closer to the NFL mean where they were earlier this season, I, I still think this is a Super Bowl contending team because the offense is healthy. They are uh, a top five unit, and that is the most important and the most predictive thing in the NFL. But let's talk about the Denver Broncos. So they are six and one in their last seven games. But uh, 
you know, you talked about, hey, should we upgrade them? Uh, no, because you got to look at the context of these games, right? Like, so who did they play? They got Dorian Thompson Robinson and PJ Walker against Cleveland. Both of those are now uh, riding the pine behind 38 year old Joe Flacco. They got to face Josh Dobbs with Minnesota, who is now the backup uh, to Nick Mullins. And last week they got a lot of Easton stick uh, against the Chargers when when Herbert went down. Um, so when you adjust for that, which I'm actually doing now, all of my passing uh, success rates are now specific to a quarterback, and so that is actually kind of it's kind of interesting, right? Because Green Bay's defense doesn't look as good when you take out the Brett Ribbon game. <laughs> um, actually, I think it's back in there because I had enough data with another game for Ribbon to. If it's a lone game where quarterbacks played, even though if it's like, you know, 30 pass attempts, I'll throw it out because there's no means for comparison. But I think Rippon's in there. So anyways, that's an example. And so when you look at like what the Broncos are doing, it's, it's you know, they haven't exactly faced uh, the best, not even the best in the NFL, but the best that these teams have to offer. And then, um, you know, you also got to look at like some of these turnover numbers. So they're plus four against Kansas City in a win. They had worse success rate in yards. They're plus three against Buffalo uh, in another one win. Plus three against Minnesota, a game that they barely squeaked by. And then uh, plus two against Cleveland. So big time for all alert with this Denver team. I think they are playing well. I mean, I mean, I don't think they're playing well. I think they're winning games. I think they are below NFL average on both sides of the ball. I think it's a pretty decent um, spot for Detroit. Uh, I liked it obviously better at, at minus four. I have it about um, Detroit by about five and a half points. So not a ton of value, but but I do think that um, Detroit will play better. And I think, I think Denver's a fraud. I agree with you across the board at this one. Um, I have the Lions here by nearly a touchdown in this game, in large part because I'm viewing it the same with you on the Denver side of things. But also, I think that Detroit has kind of had some funkiness the way things worked out for them. Frank Ragnow, their center, missed that uh, Chicago Bears game. So, like, I had a lot of Bears uh, defense in Daily Fantasy that week. So, it's like, okay, it's them on the road, playing outdoors, no center. I think that made a lot of sense. So, like... I like to view things in terms of like how you play relative to expectations. They didn't really fall that far short of expectations in that game. They had a lot of fourth down stuff that went against them in that game. And I love their aggressiveness on fourth down. It just didn't break in their favor uh, that time. So I feel like Detroit is being underrated a bit right now because of more recency bias and uh, sure. underperformances in key spots like on Thanksgiving and stuff like that. But I haven't seen enough out of them to be like, super super concerned about their long-term outlook defensively sure but cj gardner johnson now might be back next week so, which is i thought he was done for the year so i guess i was kind of surprised to see that he might be back next week or begin practicing next week um so honestly like my long-term outlook for the lions hasn't changed that much like yeah the defense sucks that's very very true but I think the offense will bounce back. I agree with you where Denver is a bit fluky. So I think it's a good spot to lay the four and a half. I got the four earlier on this week, but I think four and a half still enough value to justify buying Detroit there. Yeah, absolutely. And and I feel like, uh, you know, we were we were kind of talking about Detroit as, as a Super Bowl contender. They've dropped off a little bit. Dallas is like leaping into that conversation. I think in a couple of weeks we might drop Philly out of that conversation. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a fluid situation. San Francisco is definitely at the top, but, yeah. uh, it's going to be fun heading down the stretch. Well, even San Francisco had that time where people were out on them. So, you know, before their bye week when, um, Trent Williams is out, Diva Samuel is out, like people were out on them too. So there have been a lot of ebbs and flows in the NFC this year. Let's talk about that team you alluded to the Dallas Cowboys going on the road to take on the Buffalo bills where right now spread is one and a half and the total is meaty at 50 and a half. For this game, Bills kept their playoff wins, actually boosted them a lot last week uh, with that win over Kansas City. Yeah, But the money line for this game has tightened a bit during the week. Uh, so some action on the Cowboys. How do you see this game playing out in? Yeah, I think I think it's a pretty interesting one. I still believe in Buffalo. We talked about how their offensive metrics are good. Turnovers have definitely been an issue and, and probably got the OC fired. Um, but again, let's... I, I, I really want to focus on the pass defense because it's just all over the place. Uh, the 30th in my passing success rate after I adjust for opposition, um, which is terrible. They are 13th in my adjusted yards for pass attempt, which is 
probably where they are. They're actually the sixth best cover grade overall by PFF. And that requires a little bit of context because Tredavious White isn't playing. Um, but, you know, Teron Johnson has a coverage grade of 74. That's really good. NFL average is about 60. Uh, he's on the injured list, but hopefully he'll play. With Sewell Douglas, they traded from Green Bay. He has an 84. Uh, that is obviously good. Probably a little bit of small sample size because I think that's only the games in which he's played with Buffalo. But, I mean, he, he's been really good player since Green Bay yeah. brought him off the scrap heap, however, whether it was last year or the year before. And then Christian Benford has PFF grade of 71. I mean, that that's three corners that by a metric that I trust look pretty good. So I, I think you, we can trust that they're at least um, at least NFL average in, in terms of the defense. Obviously, you know, they could use a little bit of help on more on the, the pass rush side. Epines is on the, the injured list and Von Miller is not playing and, and, and never really was good for them this year. I have Buffalo by about two points, so I'm pretty on market on this. Uh, I, I am definitely kind of interested in Buffalo minus one and a half. Um, most of the rest of the market is is a little bit higher there. Uh, they get this at home. Dallas has been really good, but um, you know I still think there's some questions with that team. So uh, definitely lean towards Buffalo here. Yeah, I did take the Cowboys money line when it was plus 116. It's now plus 110, so that's shortened a bit. And enough where it's like, Less of a value now than it was before. But the you mentioned part of the concern I have, Ed, with doing that was the Cowboys are on the road and they are a dome team and they've had their pretty big offensive surge since their bye week. Uh, it's a seven game sample, but five of those seven games have come at home. Now, one of those road games was that game against Philadelphia where they played really, really well. Um, and I thought that they were very impressive in that game. But I'm seeing the same thing with you with the Bills, where it's like that defense hasn't really fallen off. Like, I've expected to fall off. I know the success rate numbers are bad, but like, you're talking about the coverage grades. Like, I still think they've played decently well overall, despite the poor success rate. I did think the Chiefs moved the ball pretty well against them on Sunday, despite the fact they scored just 17 points there. So, not sure how to interpret that part, but. I like the Cowboys here. I like their pass heavy approach. I like how they've been playing things there. My concern is that they've done a lot of that high efficiency stuff that my model adores while playing inside. And now they go outside, take on Buffalo wind speeds here at nine miles per hour. Nothing concerning there. So it's not crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. But it's more so like, I I don't know if it's like this, this bias getting back to when, when Dak was like young, they had huge home road splits back then. Hasn't yeah. been as dramatic recently, but like, so I do still like the Cowboys. I feel good about that bet that I made, but like that always does concern me at least a bit watching a team that has been shredding recently suddenly go outdoors to play on the road against in a, in a you know, somewhat unique environment in Buffalo. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, th- what I've been seeing in Dallas is they, they kind of started the season not, not having Dak throw deep. Yeah, that's completely changed over yeah. over the last five weeks. So it has been a pretty explosive offense. Can they get it done against a you know a better than average Buffalo defense? We'll see. All right, let's finish up here with the Sunday night football game. That is the Ravens at the Jaguars. We're right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Ravens three and a half point favorites, only minus one hundred two on that three and a half right now for the Ravens. Total in this game is forty two and a half. And last weekend we saw Trevor Lawrence play through his ankle injury. I thought it looked okay in that game. Like he was running around a bit, but like wasn't as accurate as you'd expect for Trevor Lawrence. Tough, tough defense, obviously there, but now facing another tough defense at home. Can the Jags cover here as three and a half point home underdogs? Yeah, my numbers certainly like it. I have Baltimore by 1.6 points and it, and it's not surprising. My numbers have like Jacksonville all year. Uh, they are at home and you're getting them in an out-of-division game, so it's hard to make even a team as good as Baltimore you know, more than a three-point favorite, and my model doesn't. Kind of got to talk about Jacksonville's defense. It hasn't really been good the past two games. Um, Jake Browning had a 54% passing success rate against them, and then last week Joe Flacco had about 46% passing success rate. The NFL average is 42%. So, so that hasn't been good. They've dropped to 17th in my adjusted passing success rate. Interesting note on Flacco, right? I mean, is he playing to uh, make the Hall of Fame this year? 
Oh, no, <laughs> I always I always have this conversation, and my New York Giants friends swear that Eli Manning is a Hall of Fame quarterback because of two postseason runs, <laughs> and Joe Flacco clearly has one postseason run, uh, where they ended up winning the Super Bowl. Uh, he had that miracle where the Denver safety somehow let a guy get yeah. behind him, right? And now he he's actually playing pretty well, and thirty eight years old, he's got the best defense in the NFL. Anyways, I was just hoping to make you laugh a little bit. It with, worked. Uh, Joe Flacco in the Hall of Fame. Um, but anyways, back to Jacksonville. I mean, I think, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, the other thing I wrote down about this game, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson doesn't have Mark Andrews. It's the second game. Uh, had a 44% success rate last week against the Rams, you know, and, and the Rams are – pretty much the definition of NFL average on, on defense, at least by my numbers, uh, 6.9 yards per pass attempt, which is better than the NFL average of, of six ish. So, you know, a pretty good performance. I, I'm really interested to see what he can do with probably without a top target, although you can make the argument for Zay flowers. I think, I think flowers actually probably had more targets when they were both in the lineup. Um, so that's definitely something I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, I I'm not too interested in betting against Baltimore, although, probably the way I would lean is with Jacksonville. Yeah, the plus three and a half on the Jags right now is minus 120 if you want to go uh, that, route, that route and ride with Ed's numbers. Looking back at last week in that Rams game for the Ravens, it looked like a lot of broken coverages, which I was happy with. I had uh, I had Lamar in DFS um, and like was, you know, I had Odell, had um, Isaiah Likely as well. But I think that Likely touchdown was a broken coverage and – I believe one of one of the Odell long catches was too. And broken coverages are not really sustainable. Pretty fluky. See that occur. So it is a downgrade for them with no Mark Andrews. Losing a very good football player is never a good thing for an offense. Nope. nope. I am curious how things look for them, um, given that they're more familiar with Todd Munkin's scheme. I love Todd Munkin. Um, so do you want to see how it goes? Uh, I have this at 3.8 uh, in favor of Baltimore. So pretty even thus making it a stay away from me i think we'll have some pretty fun talking props for that tomorrow on uh the when i'm filling in for tom vecchio but like i think it's gonna stay away for for my numbers uh for the ravens and jags but i believe i agree with you we're having faith in the jags overall is good and like right they're missing cam robinson the left tackle missing christian kirk but they've been missing key pieces throughout the entire year basically so I don't think we want to downgrade them too much based on that, especially with Lawrence getting a week healthier on that injured ankle. Yeah, for sure. And and it was really good to see him kind of come out, you know, especially when I have a ticket for Jacksonville to win the division, which, you know, still looking pretty good, but uh, yeah. it was good to see, you know, we don't, we don't want to necessarily see CJ Beathard or uh, no <laughs> uh, Frank. What's the third stringer, Nathan Rourke, the Nathan? preseason yeah. superhero. Yeah. Um, Adam Chernoff loves Nathan Rourke. He thinks uh, my my buddy Adam over at Raz uh, I think thinks Rourke is a is a is a is a solid NFL backup. I just don't want to watch CJ Beathard. That's the reason I like Nathan Rourke is because I just don't want to watch CJ Beathard. I've seen enough of that between his Big Ten days, the San Francisco days. I've seen enough. Like I want nothing to do with that. So give me Lawrence or give me Rourke or give me Death at this point. CJ Beathard or Mitch Trubisky. Um, Joe Flacco. <laughs> You'd rather watch Joe Flacco? That that'll be interesting to see what you think about that in a couple weeks. So, okay, I know that the ages here are different, but like, remember when Will Levis started began starting for the for the yeah. Titans? It was like, okay, he probably sucks, but at least he'll like throw a deep. That's Joe Flacco. Like, right. he probably sucks, but he'll throw a deep. I'd rather watch a deep ball that might fall incomplete than like other stuff. But but Stefanski's letting him throw deep, right? Like that, yeah, they're throwing at a very high rate the past two weeks. He not, is leaning fully into it. <laughs> that is not what I would expect when you bring no. a thirty-eight-year-old. I think it's I mean, because their were... run game is awful too. Like I think they know that their run game is awful, so we might as well like chuck it downfield and see what happens. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you could, you could have done that with Walker or DTR too, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's at least he's not boring. That's that's my evaluation of Joe Flacco is at least he's not boring. And but wasn't he kind of the definition of boring last year with the Jets? He was like, ah, Flacco starting the first four games. So I hated him because like I 
do I admit that I kind of I used to like I I liked Zach Wilson coming out. So like I rooted against Flacco because I was like, okay, I need right. Wilson to look good in comparison to Flacco. Um, I can say that because it was documented, like it's on the website that I liked Zach Wilson coming out. So I can at least say it. Um, you know, can't hide from my bad takes. Um, so I was rooting against Flacco and his efficiency numbers. It was actually very similar to the to what it's like now with the Browns, where his efficiency numbers, like EPA numbers, were terrible. But like he was throwing it deep, they had a very high pass rate. You know, I'd rather watch them chuck it deep with Flacco than have Jerome Ford, you know, go for 3.5 yards per carry. So, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, not the best by any means, but I'd rather I'd pick Flacco over Bethard at least. If if that's the the bar he has to clear, then sign me up. All right. All righty, that is all that we have here for this week on covering the spread. A lot more Flacco discussion than I'm sure a lot of people expected coming into this one. Well, that game against the Bears actually isn't terrible um, on Sunday as well. Ed, what is going on for you this week over the power rank? I had a great conversation with Ryan Noonan of 4 for 4 uh, on the podcast. He has been doing really, really well with tackle props. Uh, was very generous in uh, actually giving us three. Uh, on the show, uh, I th- I think his analysis is actually even more interesting, uh, the way he digs into it. So check that out. The Football Analytics Show is the name of the podcast, and you can get that wherever your podcasts, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. And then uh, you check out my free sports betting email newsletter. If you're looking for action on any given weekend, Five Nugget Saturday is my answer for you. I curate the best uh, tips out there. Uh, so check that out at thepowerrank.com. All right. And the Ryan Noonan conversation again is over at the Football Analytics Show. Find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim.Sonis and follow FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Back with you once again tomorrow talking NFL playoff props with JJ Zach Reason, EPL with Austin Cass. Then I'll have a breakdown of the Ravens and Jags coming your way on Saturday morning. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 